Dear viewers, I am Professor Jugen Sandra Kolita of Guwahati University. Today I will be talking about estrus cycle and its hormonal regulation. But before to start my lecture, I want to let you know that the Zoological Society of Assam has taken this special initiative to help the students in undergraduate and postgraduate courses during this lockdown period in India. I am very happy to dedicate my first PPT to my teacher, Professor Bhutaram, who taught me zoology with great care and love during my college days in Dorong College, Tezpur. Here to talk about the learning outcomes, after going through this particular PPT, the students will learn the following. They will get to know about the SS cycle and the cyclic changes in the organs like ovary, uterus and in the reproductive tract in female mammal. They will get to know the different phases of the cycle, the method of studying the cycle. The student will know about the hormones coming from different endocrine glands like hypothalamus, pituitary and ovaries. Student will know about the regulation of the cycle and the hormonal feedback mechanism that exists amongst the hormones. Student will also know the importance of study of estrus cycle. Here I am going to talk about the definition of the estrus cycle. And when we talk about the cycle, we always know that a cycle means the repetition of certain events at a definite interval of time. Here the estrus cycle is a reproductive cycle occurs in lower category of female mammals. It is the repetition of morphological, physiological and behavioral changes that occur in female mammals at a definite interval of time. This duration of time interval differs in species. During their reproductive life, female mammals exhibit two types of reproductive cycle. One is estrus cycle that occurs in infra primate mammals, example mouse, cat, dog, horse, cow, elephant, lion, etc. And the menstrual cycle in human females and primates. So in here I will be talking about the historical background. The word estrus was first used by Walter Hip as long as back in 1900. This is a Latin form of the Greek word oistros which means sexual season get fly, frenzy, sting or madness. He named the phases of the mammalian estrus cycle for the first time. He named them as proestrus, estrus, metastrus, diastrus. These are the different phases in an estrus cycle. He also used another term that was an estrus. An estrus means no cycle, no estrus activities. Later, Stockard and Pepe Nicholas in 1917, they studied the existence of typical estrus cycle in guinea pig. It was for the first time in the world, in any species, the changes that occur in vaginal canal during the estrus cycle were thoroughly characterized both mechanically and microscopically. So let us talk about the different types of estrus cycle. In different mammals during their reproductive life, they exhibit estrus cycles and the duration of the cycle varies between species. Some of the animals are polyestrous animals, meaning that cycles occurring throughout the year. And these are the examples like cattle, pig, mouse, rat, they can become pregnant in any season of the year. 
Some of them in this category are seasonally polyesters. In here, they have multiple cycles occurring only during a certain period of the year, like horse, sheep, goat, deer, cat. They are again classified into two important groups. First is the short day breeders. When these animals present as the cycles during autumn only, when day length is short, like goat and ewes. In another group, they belong to long day breeders, like mares and queen. Here the esters occurring mainly during spring, when the day length is long. Therefore, they are long day breeders. Another category is also there. In this type, monoesterous animals, they only one cycle occurs in the whole year. And these animals are like dog, wolves, fox, and bear. So, dear students, let me talk about the basic differences between estrus cycle and menstrual cycle. Estrus cycle occurs in infraprimate female mammals. For example, rat, mice, cat, dog, cow, horse, pig, etc., which I have already mentioned. But menstrual cycle occurs in human, female, and primates only. In estrus cycle, we have four distinct phases, proestrus, estrus, metastrus, and diastrus, where receptivity to males is limited to estrus phase only. But here, in the case of menstrual cycle, we don't get any type of proestas, estas, metastas, or diastas phases. Here, females can mate with male during the entire cycle. As the cycle length varies, but duration of menstrual cycle is a fixed time, like it is about a month, which is termed as lunar month, 28 plus minus 2 days. In case of estrus cycle, there is no regular bleeding phase. But in the case of menstrual cycle, we get regular and distinct bleeding phase towards the end of each cycle, and that is called menstruation, where from the terminology menstrual cycle emerges. Okay, here let me talk about the length of the estrus cycle and the duration of the estrus phase in some of the animals. Here the species, estrus phase and the estrus cycle total length expressed in days. We find some of the species here, mouse, rat. Let me talk about mouse. In there, the estrus phase is only half day, about 12 hours or 14 hours. As the cycle total length is 4 to 6 days. In that also, the total length of the cycle is 4 to 5 days. As the period is only about 12 hours, a half day. In hamster, the estrus phase is 1 day and estrus cycle is only 4 days. So like that we find in other species also, like in lion, the estrus phase, that is the heat phase, is 9 days. It's quite long. And in estrus cycle, total length, if we see, it is 55 days, even more than menstrual cycle. As I have already talked about the differences between estrus cycle and menstrual cycle, it is interesting to note that in these phases, the estrus cycle length varies widely, right from few days in case of hamster 4 days to 55 days in lion in this particular chart I am showing you and the estrus phase this phase is called heat period that is the estrus period in animals is very important because only in here females allow the males for mating so as I have already discussed about the total duration of the estrus cycle 
and the duration of the space phase in certain animals. Here I want to show you that in animals even we can determine the time of different phases proestas, estas, metastas, diastas. Suppose in here I am showing in mice and rats, in rats and in mice. Here the phase wise timing in hours we can show like proestas in rat 12 to 14 hours in mice it is about 24 hours estas is 12 to 14 hours in mice it is 12 to 18 hours metastas is very short phase 6 to 8 hours only in case of rat 8 to 24 hours in case of mice and diastas it is very long and diastas is the longest phase in the estas cycle so therefore it is very important to know about different phases of the estas cycle in many of the experimental situation when we use animals in the laboratory. So here very briefly I want to mention about the four phases once again like proestas of the estas cycle is the phase characterized by development of both uterus and ovaries. Estas is the phase where receptivity to a male is there. Metastas is characterized by formation of corpus luteum. Diastas is the phase where progesterone, a hormone of the ovary, increases in concentration. Also I want to mention about the anastas, the term used uh, by Hips in 1900. That is not a phase in the estas cycle, but it is a prolonged period of sexual inactivity like sexual rest in many of the animals and the reproductive system remains in dormant state. So let's have a quick view in the reproductive system in female mice. Here I am showing mainly the uterus we can see in two horns. Therefore in rat and mice it is termed as bicornuate uterus. We can see the ovaries also. This is one ovary, this is another. Normally they are buried under fat pads. This is the cervix of the uterus and the vagina. And the changes will be there in the ovaries. Then ovarian hormone will change the entire uterus and the vaginal cap during the estrus cycle. So here we find the developing ovaries. These are the images of sections of ovaries showing structures during estrus cycle. In proestas phase, after the animal attains maturity, the hormones of hypothalamus, GnRH, then pituitary hormones, gonadotropin, follicle stimulating hormone mainly, will initiate development of follicles inside the ovaries. Those developing follicles, right from the primary to secondary to tertiary, then they will go in the estrus phase to the graphian stage. When they will attain the graphian status, which are called graphian follicles, during this particular estrus phase, ovulation will be there. So after ovulation, as time passes, during mat estrus, corpus luteum will form. And then the last phase in diastas, corpus luteum will be disappearing slowly. So all these changes inside the ovaries are because of the hormonal interplay. GnRH, that is from the hypothalamus, dictating the pituitary follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. They will control the follicular development mainly by FSH ovulation by luteinizing hormone LH and both these gonadotropin FSH and LH will control two most important hormone. Those are estrogen and progesterone. In the following discussion I will talk about the role of estrogen and progesterone in functioning and changing the entire uterus during Proestas, metastas, and diastas. 
the ovarian hormones, estrogen and progesterone, they will change the structure, structurally as well as morphologically the uterine horns. Here in the proestrus we can see that this is the very active development in uterus and mostly the estrogen from ovarian follicle will act in here. And as the time passes, the follicular hormones, estrogen and progesterone, will be working like proestrus, this uterus in dynamic state. In estrus, we see that more development is there. If the ovulation is there, then inside the uterus, a bed is prepared and fertilization, if occurs, then fertilized egg will be implanted in here. During metastasis, we can see that the structure uh, decreases and that is followed by diastrus. Again, that uterus will be coming to very dormant state. And if the cycle is normal, no pregnancy, then this dormant uterus will develop in the next cycle, like in proestrus. In microscopic observation also, we can see there are development of cellular layers. Number of cells will increase. Size of uterine cells will increase. Development of uterine gland will be there and during this estrus phase, development is the highest. As I have mentioned, if fertilization is there, implantation is there, then pregnancy will continue and no further cycle will be there. But if it is not, no fertilization, then this particular development will recede, it will and slowly towards diastrus, then cycle will repeat again. So let us discuss about the changes in vaginal cytology during the estrus cycle in four different phases. Let us talk about the proestrus. During proestrus, in the vaginal cytology, we find presence of small round epithelial cells and they have distinct nucleus and they are relatively of uniform in appearance. As time passes, it goes to estrus and during estrus cellular appearance will totally change. What we find here, the keratinized, they are cornified squamous epithelial cells. They are placed like a stacks of dishes and those cells, they don't have prominent nucleus, no cytoplasm, rather cytoplasm will be granulated here. That is the term we use, the cornified epithelial, squamous epithelial cells. Then the next phase, if we go and see, then we find that during metastasis phase, normally creatinized epithelial cells will be there, but they will be infiltrated by leukocytes. Then in the last phase, diastasis, which is the long phase in the cycle, we can see only the large number of leukocytes. And occasionally there may be one or two nucleated epithelial cells. So therefore it is very important to detect this particular cellular association and by which we can identify the stage of the estrus cycle. So in our previous discussion, I have discussed about the changes in the ovary, changes in the uterus and in the vaginal cytology in small animal like rat and mice. Here I want to talk about the physiological changes during each of the stages of the cycle. Here let us talk about the changes in proestrus in the estrus cycle in big animal, in cow. Here normally the follicle enlarges as we can see here. This is the phase of the estrus. The most important hormone is estrogen, which are acting on the uterus, that estrogen increases. Then because of the action of estrogen, the vascularity and morphology and physiology of uterus will change. Endometrial glands begin to grow. 
and estrogen level will be highest we can see here and then it will go to the estrus phase so in my following discussion i'll talk about the physiological changes in the next phase that is est so let me talk about the physiological changes during the most important phase of the estrus cycle that is estrus this is the phase when females allow male for mating and this is the phase where lh that is the luteinizing hormone of the pituitary peaks that is called surge of lh and ovulation occurs in most of the mammals this is a picture from cow as the cycle but in cow it takes 24 to 48 hours to ovulation to occur after the surge of lh and what are other changes in the uterus uterine motility will be high and contraction moving towards the oviduct sperm term support will be optimal during this particular estrus phase and cervical mucus volume increases all will be there for facilitating the sperm transport and this particular phase will be followed by metastasis let us now see what are the changes during metastasis metastasis is the phase when estrogen level will be low as i have already mentioned that in cow ovulation occurs here because it takes about 20 to 48 hours after the surge of lh to ovulate corpus hemorrhagicum forms here in the uterus contraction will be minimum it will subside endometrial glands continue to grow and become coiled in cattle sometimes a bleeding phase is seen follicle stimulating hormone here we can see that it is in increasing level to trigger growth of follicle for future cycles the physiological changes during diastasis because this is the last phase of the estrus cycle and if we notice we find that there is the increase in the secretion of progesterone from the follicles of the ovaries follicle stimulating hormone also increases at some point to cause growth of ovulatory follicles then the in uterus we find that secretes fluid but volume gradually decreases contraction stops then corpus luteum slowly regresses here most important part is that progesterone progesterone is a hormone which is termed as the pregnancy maintaining hormone if pregnancy is established during this particular phase after ovulation then pregnancy will be maintained for some time by this progesterone and this phase is the longest in the entire estrus cycle so now let me talk about the regulation of estrus cycle the regulation of the cycle is very important and this cycle is regulated by the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis here we see that from the hypothalamus gnrh gonadotropin releasing hormone which is a decapeptide secreted from the hypothalamus and this particular molecule sends signal to the anterior pituitary for secreting and releasing two important gonadotropins follicle stimulating hormone as i have mentioned that this is responsible for folliculogenesis the development of follicle inside the ovaries and luteinizing hormone that is very important for ovulation to occur and both these hormones will control production of most important steroids they are estrogen and progesterone from the ovaries so ovarian follicles will be under the control of lh and fsh in regards to development of follicles ovulation as well as 
production of steroids and these steroids they act on the uterus right from the beginning of the cycle and they control the uterine development and they control the development and changes in the entire reproductive tract and secondary sexual characters of female. As I have mentioned about the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, this particular axis right from the hypothalamus to gonads, hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis. Here we see that many of the hormones right from GnRH, LHFSH and ovarian hormone estrogen progesterone, they have very intricate relationship and their interplay is very important and that relationship is called hormonal feedback. So they have relationship in two different ways. One is called positive feedback, another is called negative feedback. If we see that follicle stimulating hormone, for example, in the initial stage of the proestrus, that is minimum in the circulation. And when that was slowly increasing, by the time the estrogen was produced from the ovary. And that minimum level of estrogen was initiating more FSH from the anterior pituitary. That initiation was in a positive way. So that is called positive feedback of estrogen on FSH. And on the other hand, if we see towards the later part during the estrus, that estrogen level will be very high. And that high level of estrogen will act negatively on the pituitary, anterior pituitary, thereby decreasing the secretion of follicle stimulating hormone. That relationship is just opposite of the earlier one. It is called negative feedback. And we find that relationship amongst the hormone. And this we have information that the Susan maintains relationship even to the level of the brain. And also LH, the hormone which is of the pituitary and progesterone. They have this particular type of positive and feedback positive and negative feedback way of controlling the physiological functions during the entire reproductive cycle and reproductive life of the female. Dear students, for the studying of estrus cycle, we can use a simple technique which is called vaginal smear technique. What we do here, we collect the vaginal cells, then we place that on a slide and after making a smear, we follow a procedure and simply stain in GMSA and we observe the slide under microscope. And in here we can see four different cell associations in four different phases of the estrus cycle. And it is very important to note that all these are different in different phase of the cycle. I'll discuss a little bit more in the next slide. So here, this is a slide from our laboratory we prepared at Goat University. This is estrus cycle in red. Proestrus, estrus, metastrus, diastrus, and cellular types are very clear. Here in proestrus, nucleated epithelial cells. In estrus, cornified epithelial cells. These are the cells, cornified epithelial and leukocytes in metastrus and in diastrus all are leukocytes. So from these types of cells we can identify the phase of the cycle. So that is beautiful application of this simple procedure to identify the phases of the cycle in estrus cycle. So study of estrus cycle is very important for various laboratory experiment in research work. It is important in farm animal studies. It is important in induced breeding as well as IVF ET technology. So there are students with this importance of study of estrus cycle 
I am coming to the end of my lecture. So here is my email ID. If you have any queries, you can contact me. Thank you very much.